Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of our Raspberry Pi series and today we're going to be installing Nginx Proxy Manager on our Raspberry Pi. Nginx Proxy Manager is a must-have for any server administrator who would like to safely open up a port, a service or application to the internet. What Nginx Proxy Manager does is act as a reverse proxy allowing the management of incoming connections to be redirected to the correct device and service. This is all done internally and the outside visitor will be unaware that this process has taken place. It adds a layer of security for your devices that are hosting the service or application as it does not directly expose the device to the internet. It also means that you can limit the ports you open on your gateway router. If you were not using a reverse proxy, then you will need to open a port for each service application you use. Using Nginx Proxy Manager means you only need to open two ports and that's 80 and 443 and the Proxy Manager will take care of the rest. Another amazing feature of Nginx Proxy Manager is the ability to create Let's Encrypt SSL TLS certificates, creating an encrypted connection between your outside visitor's browser and your internal service or application. This allows for the safe communication of sensitive data. So we have our domain name and a port number, which will indicate the port number that this application at the resting server would need. So if Nextcloud was on a certain port, then we'd need to add that at the end of the domain name. So how this domain name knows where this router is, is because it will be set in the registrar of the domain name. So wherever you bought your domain name from, you can add a, a record on there for that IP address. Now, if you have a static IP address, you can set that for the domain name. So this, when you put this domain name in, it will know that you're talking about this IP address of your router. So you put in the domain name plus the port, it then forwards it down through DNS to your router. Your router will then have port forwarding on the router. So it will say that if an incoming connection is coming to port 80, it would forward it to, let's say, WordPress. Um, and if they had a domain plus port 443 on the end, it would come in through the secure, because 443 is SSL TLS. It will come in through 443, it will be redirected from the router through to Nextcloud. So what that means is if you were going to add more Docker containers with different applications and you wanted them to be accessible from the outside, you would have to have a unique port for each application, which means that it's leaving your router very insecure. You know, the more, the more ports you have open, the less secure your device is going to be to stop potential attackers from attacking your network. So what you want to do is limit the amount of ports that you have open on your router just to keep your devices safe. So what we can do to do that Okay, so instead, of, I know I've, I've talked about 80 and 443. Now, if we had a Nextcloud server, okay, and we forward the 80 and 443 to Nextcloud, how would we get through to WordPress? We'd have to open up an additional port, set a custom port on that um, router, and then forward that custom port to your Raspberry Pi. So your, your router will know where your WordPress install is, and it would forward that port. So you'd put in your domain, so let's say your domain, and then we'll say port, I don't know, 669, for instance, forward that down, 669, where is that? It will point that port to your WordPress instance. Okay, so that's a bit overcomplicated. So with a proxy manager, what we're going to do, we will install Nginx Proxy Manager. So what we will do then is once we put in our domain name, we don't actually have to have a port number because anything that comes in on that domain, we can set in our DNS. So you could even use subdomains uh, to help separate your services. So we could have nextcloud.domain and then um, we could put that in. So nextcloud.domain, then it will go across to, we have an A record that's with our registrar telling us that it's the IP address of the router. So it would come through. And then on our router, we would have two ports open only, which is port 80 and port 443. So port 80 is for HTTP traffic and 443 is for HTTPS traffic. So that will then be forwarded down to Engine Proxy Manager then within Engine Proxy Manager, okay, you'd have an entry for that with a Let's Encrypt uh, certificate installed on there too. Um, and in Nginx, it will say, so if you're looking for nextcloud.domain, it would come down into Nginx, say, we're looking for nextcloud.domain, um, and it will say, well, I know where that is. It's on, X, it's on this port here. And it would forward on that connection to your Nextcloud because it's inside of a container. You can, you can have that on whatever ports you want. You can set that within the container. Um, and same with WordPress, you could put in um, WordPress.domain, it would come in, you'd have an A record that sends it down to the router. The router will then pass that down to Engine Proxy Manager. Engine Proxy Manager will then forward that onto WordPress.domain 
and then it will serve and it'll go back the opposite way. It will serve it to the visitor and that's how it works. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load up Firefox and as you can see, we're on the Nginx Proxy Manager website. Now, if you scroll down the page, it gives you a Docker Compose YAML file that you can copy and paste and you can use that to install both the Maria database and the Proxy Manager. Now, there's a few problems with this. What The first problem is it's version free. So we can't use that on Portana to install anything. So we're going to have to actually manually create the Docker by using the terminal, which is not a problem, which we can do. The second problem that we actually have with the Raspberry Pi is it's an ARM device. So the CPU is not built to work with this package, which creates the database. So we need to replace this with a database that works with the Raspberry Pi. So there is one from Yoba Systems called Yoba Systems Alpine Maria Database. So we're going to use this. It's basically just going to be a drop and replacement. So we can still take this whole file and use it. If you go to our website, there's a link in the description to the blog post regarding this. And if you go to that link, you'll find all the commands that we're going to use today. So I suggest you go there so you can copy and paste them in. Um, I have it in a sublime text file. As you can see here, I've replaced the Maria database with the Yoba Systems database, which should work. As I've said in previous videos, I'm using an SSD on my Raspberry Pi, so I'm happy for these to install in the default location. If you guys are using an SD card, you may want to change these locations to your SD card. So the storage locations, when I had an SD card, I used to have a folder called App Data. And then within that App Data folder, I would have the application name as the folder, and I'd have all the data stored in there. So basically Nextcloud, all the Nextcloud data would be within the Nextcloud folder. So if you are in that situation where you need to install this to an external drive, what you can do is anything before this colon is your file and folder location. So you've got to change that to your external drive, whichever one you're using. As I said, I'm, I've got an SSD drive. I'm going to keep it the same. Another thing you want to change with this file is everywhere that you see NPM, you need to change these NPM values to something unique and obviously have a strong password. Um, with a database, you should never use sort of, um, you know, special characters. Just try and keep it as, you know, capitals and small case and numbers and mix it up. Um, the reason why I say that is because sometimes using, you know, some, some characters, it can cause wacky things to happen within a database. So I would never recommend to do that. Um, so anyway, moving on. For layman's terms, keeping it simple, I'm going to keep the default NPM values. So I'm just going to copy and paste this straight into a file that we're going to create now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go across to our party application and we're going to remotely access our Raspberry Pi. So you put your Pi's IP in there and your Pi's port and you click open and then put your Pi username in and your password. Okay, and you clear this out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a folder called Nginx. So make directory nginx and then we're going to go into that folder by using cd which is current directory so we're going to clear this out now we've got an empty folder okay we're going to create two files in here the first one is going to be a config.json file so we're going to go to nano and then we're going to config.json and then what we're going to do is because i've used all the default values Again, you can find all this information on my website. So on the actual blog post for this website, we'll have all of our commands for today. So I'll put that in there. Again, change all the NPM values to your unique values for safety and security. So we're going to exit this by pressing Control X, then Y to save, and then Enter. And if you press upper arrow, you can go back into the file and make sure that that's been written. So you can Control X to exit. The next file we're going to create is a Docker Compose file. So we're going to go nano and then we're going to go docker tac compose. And this is a YAML file, so it's dot yml and then enter on there. And then we're going to go to our sublime text. And I'll just stipulate again, I'm I'm using default values because I'm going to remove this afterwards. This is just to show you guys nice and simply how to install it. So I'm going to copy and paste that into my YAML file, keeping everything the same. And I'm going to press Control X to write it, Y to say yes to save, and Enter to exit. 
So now what I'm going to do is one final command and this will deploy the container for us and get it running. So once we've run this, it's going to take a little while to go through. Um, but once it's complete, we should have two new dockers installed. And in fact, what we're going to do now is we'll go sudo docker ps, put in my password. Now, as you can see, we have one container in there now, which is our portainer container. So you can see it right there. That's just one container that's in there. So once this process is finished, we should see three in there. So I've now cleared that out, and I'm going to run one final command, which is sudo space docker tack compose space up space tack d to deploy it. If you guys are enjoying our content, if you can give us a like and a subscribe, that will be great. If you click the notification bell, you'll be notified of any new content that we put up. Okay, so now that's finished, what we're going to do, we're going to run that docker ps command again to list out our dockers. And as you can see now, we have three dockers installed. So we're going to go to our browser. So we're going to open up a new tab and we're going to go 192.168. And as you can see, it's there, Portainer, which is on port 9000. And as you can see, we have three running containers. So if, we, if yours says unhealthy, just restart it. So we're going to be looking at this database to make sure everything went through okay. So basically what we're going to be looking at now is port 81. And there you go. We have our engine X proxy manager. And the default values we're going to log in with is admin at example.com. And the password is change me. And then click sign in. And you'll be asked to add your admin name, your nickname, and your email address. And then you're asked to change your password. So this one would be change me. And then put in your new password and then repeat it. And there you have it. We now have Nginx Proxy Manager installed and ready to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our diagram and we're going to look at this again. What we've managed to do is we've installed Nginx Proxy Manager on our Raspberry Pi in a container. So this is now sitting here ready for communications to come down from our router. Now, everyone's router is different. Your router won't be the same as mine. You know, there's so many on the market. So there's a different way of forwarding these two ports. These two ports need forwarding now to Nginx. So the next step we've got to do now is we need to get into our router and we need to open up port 80 and 443 and we need to port forward it to our Raspberry Pi. So what you need to do is go port forwarding And then you'd need to put the name of your router in. So, for instance, an ASUS router, um, let's say an AC68U, and then port forwarding on a root ASUS router, and it can show you how to do it. So, what you would do is you would go to WAN, you'd go to your virtual server port forwarding, you would enable it by clicking yes. So, what you would do is you would create two entries down here in port forwarding. The first entry would be for port 80, so you'd put service name. And then under service name, you would put engine X proxy manager and then HTTP. Source target, you'd leave blank. Port range would be 80. Then you'd have your local IP in here. So that would be your address of your Raspberry Pi, which in my case would be 192.168.2.5. And then the local port would be 80. And the protocol would be TCP. And then I'd click the plus sign to add it. Then I'll go through it again. And I would add another service name. And I'll set that service name as Nginx Proxy Manager, and then it'll be HTTPS. Source target would be ignored. Port range would be 443. Local IP would be the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. The local port would be 443. And then the protocol would be TCP again. And I'll press plus again on that, and then apply for both of them ports to be forwarded. 
So what would happen now is when any request comes in for port 80 or 443, it will be passed through to the router. The router would say, yes, I've been told to pass on any ports from 80 or 443 to the Raspberry Pi. So the request will come straight through, be passed down to Nginx, and then from there, if at the moment there's no entries in there, so it would just literally show nothing. It would have probably an Nginx proxy manager page saying nothing else. Your Nginx proxy manager is now ready to accept connections from the outside and forward them to the service that's required. So to test that Nginx proxy manager is working via the internet, what you can do is if you come onto a fresh page on um, Firefox, or if you're using Chrome, just have a look and search for your IP address. So put whatismyipaddress.com. It will tell you your public facing IP address. Now that's different to what your IP address is for your router, which will have a local address, which will be like 192.168, etc. Your public address will be check will be different. So what you need to do is put your find out what your public address is. I'm not going to show you mine for security reasons, but you can put in your IP address and then put colon and then port 80 to make sure that it works. So this is what we're going to do now. Pretend that this is my public address. Even though it's not, it's, we, know, we know that this address is my internal address. And then if you click on port 80, so you'd have your public address, colon, and then port 80. And then you should see this page. If you see this page and everything is set up correctly, and we are ready to go. In episode 7, we're going to be continuing to configure our Nginx proxy manager and we're going to install a dynamic DNS service on our Raspberry Pi so that if our IP address changes, it's going to keep updating the domain name so that people can still get access to our services. So that's what we're going to be doing in episode 7. So I hope you enjoyed today's show and we'll see you in the next one.